Hello again, I'm Pastor Bill Sinyard, the pastor of the Movie Church, New Life Church at Five Points. Uh, today I want to review Revolutionary Road, the uh, movie that just came out in 2008. It is directed by Sam Mendez, one of my favorite directors. I think he is, he is one of the best directors out there. He, his best movie, in my opinion, has been American Beauty, which I thought was brilliantly done. Uh, this one is also quite good. He is using uh, a book written by Richard Yates, uh, a, 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 again, a brilliant writer who passed away in 1992. He has not gained the, uh, Richard Yates has not gained the uh, fame that I think he deserves. Uh, this book was one of his best, Revolutionary Road. Uh, Stuart Onan, in a very helpful article, uh, quotes Yates in an interview saying this, and I think this captures the whole sense of the film. And I think this is what, what tugs at, our, at the viewer's heart. He says, Yates said this, If my work has a theme, I suspect it's a simple one, that most human beings are inescapably alone, and therein lies their tragedy. And he does a brilliant job, and Mendez does a brilliant job to put it on film to capture the loneliness of suburb dwellers. Um, there's parallels between American Beauty and Revolutionary Road. I think Sam Mendez is picking up a theme in his work. The difference being American Beauty has, in the, in the midst of the, of the book, has some comic relief, not much. It has some redemption, and it has a sense of finding beauty uh, in, the, in the midst of all the darkness. Revolutionary Road has none of that. It's, it's ultimately a very dark, heavy, heavy, heavy movie. Uh, let me quote Onan reviewing Richard Yates' book. It's a little bit long of a quote, but, but uh, you guys are up for this, so listen. This is quoting Onan. Revolutionary Road has little good to say about American institutions. In the beginning, Frank and April Wheeler gain our sympathy, since we all know how stultifyingly dull the suburbs are, how false and vapid the consumer culture, how grindingly dumb the office jobs. And we can all identify with the terrors of self-consciousness and the sorrow of things going wrong for the ones we love the frustrations of money, and the realization that, that we're nowhere close to living our ideal lives. We all consider ourselves special, and we all hit desperate patches where we have to compromise or downgrade our larger hopes, give up our bravest expectations. That's life. That's the Mendez movie. That's the Richard Yates book. Is is about how living in the suburbs, living our consumerism and materialism, ultimately requires that we die, that we give up on our dreams and expectations. We realize that we're just another character in a much, much, much larger play, and we're just playing supporting roles. And so it's a must-see. This movie is a must-see for anybody who's in, who, who wants to see the result of consumerism or materialism, uh, to see it at its worst. Uh, if, if you have a church and you're ministering out in the suburbs, it really is a must-see, even though there's some harsh, 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 ugly scenes. Um, in the, the movie, the characters, the Wheelers, this young couple, come to see, they come to realize they've missed their dreams. They've become another suburb dweller, another couple uh, with unfulfilled potential. Um, Frank Wheeler, a young, bored husband, he rationally gets it that he's slowly dying. He, he calls it a hopeless emptiness. His wife, April, is more emotional. She gets it at an emotional level. And this is what she says when she's finally getting it in the movie. She says to her husband, everything you said was based on this great premise of ours that we're somehow very special and superior to the whole thing, meaning superior to the suburb dwellers. And, and she continues, and all I wanted to say was, but we're not. Look at us. We are the people you've been talking about. How did we ever get into the strange little dream world, the Donaldsons and the Kramers and the Wingates? That's how we both got committed to this enormous delusion. Um, American Beauty, like Revolutionary Road, has a prophet that sees it and tells the characters they're in a hopeless emptiness. And, and like American Beauty, the prophet is a little bit on the strange side. John Givings he is the son of the realtor who sold him the house, one of their neighbors, and he is at an insane asylum. But he clearly gets it, and he sees uh, in Frank and April, early on he sees hope for them that they're going to escape with their dreams, 
but they choose to stay. And he says to them, he just erupts at a meeting and says, what happened? You got cold feet or what? You decided you like it here after all? You figure it's more com comfy here in, in the old hopeless emptiness after all? Um, another great quote from the movie, I think this is insightful, Frank, the young husband, gives a definition of April of insanity, and he says this, here's his definition of insanity, the inability to relate to another human being. It's the inability to love. And, and that condemns everybody in the suburbs, and that condemns all of us to the insane asylum. And ultimately, that's what Yates does and Mendez does in the movie, is you're not sure where the insane asylum begins and ends. The suburbs become the place where individuals live. They're in a, they are unable to communicate to one another, unable to love one another, and, and their life becomes empty. And frankly, as a pastor, that's where we dwell. That's our greatest fears, if, if we could be honest, is that I'm ending up living in a house that somebody else lived in before me, and then somebody will after I leave, and I don't even make a footprint in the sand. And uh, they capture that so well in this dark, heavy movie. movie. Technically, the movie is shot in some fairly bland 50-ish faux uh, color uh, images. I think that's really brilliant. It picks up this dark, dark, heavy, shadowy kind of tone. Kate Winslet does a fantastic job in her role. She was well positioned in the role. I think if there was any critique of the movie, I think Leonardo DiCaprio was poorly chosen for that role. I think he overacts, uh, and, and I think that's unfortunate. Overall, I give it a three out of four rating. Um, on the website, we will put discussion questions for those who would like to discuss uh, various things in, in the, uh, the movie. So, so check that out on the website. That's www.themoviechurch.us. I'm Pastor Bill Senior. We'll save a seat for you.